Hello and welcome to our JavaScript tutorial series. In this video, we're just going to introduce you to JavaScript a little, just tell you a little about some background information, some history, and tell you what's in store in this course, basically, what are you going to expect in this course. All right, so let's get right into it. So what is JavaScript? Well, it's a programming language for web development. So it's like you have HTML and CSS for like the design and the appearance and you have you can use JavaScript for actually make programming function certain functionality into your web pages. So JavaScript itself is event driven. It has you have a lot of you can have a lot of sort of functions in, in JavaScript that allow you to work do some sort of function or calculation based on a mouse click and button presses. It is also based on objects. So in Objects, in brief, are basically abstractions, uh, abstract units of data that contain a set of information or data, and other, other data itself that does some sort of work or provides some sort of solution or something. But we'll get into that later. So JavaScript, along with HTML and CSS, is front end. So it doesn't rely on the server's resources to actually run things. So it can't really do heavy, pro like, calculation like resource heavy pro tasks function like tasks so it's it's basically used on a, the client's web browser so it's limited the performance of the programming tasks done in javascript are limited to the person to the user's browser so and with that it should not be confused with java the syntax is a little different they look similar and they have a similar name but they're not the same at all they're Pretty different things and just a fun fact it was created in 10 days by Brendan Eich I hope I'm saying that name right okay moving on so where is JavaScript exactly where can it be found well it's in virtually all modern websites like if you if you ever pressed F12 in your browser you might see some JavaScript in there you'll see a lot of HTML and CSS you'll see some some sort of like sort of tags that say using .js file that's a JavaScript file which we'll be talking about later on and JavaScript is actually used in some applications like Google Chrome it's actually the V Google Chrome V8 engine or some if I'm not mistaken if that what it's called is used it's used as JavaScript which is actually basis for node which we'll actually be talking about that in its own course so like I said before, JavaScript runs on the client side as the interpreter. I think I spelled that wrong. Excuse me. You got to forgive my spelling for that. Uh, so JavaScript is an interpreter. It's basically a type of programming language that interprets the user's syntaxes and program and it process it in the web browser. So there's no compiler really. It's an interpreter because the compiler talks to the machine directly while this works with the browser. It's kind of confusing. I won't get into many details. Just know that JavaScript relies on the client's browser when doing programming tasks. All right, moving on. So why JavaScript? Well, if you're learning web development, it's the, one of the basic three parts of web development. So you have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And it's easy, pretty easy to learn, you'll see. And it's easy to write. It's like the syntax is really lenient. It, but that will prove to be a double-edged sword, as you'll see later on in this tutorial series. And modern trends actually are shifting to use more JavaScript. So you actually see that a lot in, the, in a trending thing called the mean stack. So Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node. These are all based on JavaScript. And this course is actually, instead of traditionally teaching you how to use web develop, how to web develop things, develop web applications, we're going to teach you how to work with JavaScript, the syntaxes and stuff to prepare you for working with the mean stack, which will also have tutorial series for. So yeah, just to keep in mind, the, so like to sum up what I just said, JavaScript in this course is going to be taught in such a way that we're going to focus on actually programming in JavaScript and syntaxes and later on asynchronous JavaScript, which is actually required for the mean stack. So this course will prepare you for working with the mean stack. 
All right. And so what will we need for this course? Well, you're going to need a web browser, either Chrome or Firefox, or even actually those two will probably suffice. And that's the two I use. But I'll be using in this course in particular, I'll be using Firefox. And so you also maybe need some basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. It wouldn't hurt if you knew some stuff from that. But um, in this course, I won't be using it that much. I'll just be focusing on JavaScript itself. I won't be making a web page or anything or any web development per se. And um, so I'll just be writing a few little tags and maybe an ID in the tag like from CSS. But that's about it for this course that I've planned out anyway. So, but uh, if there are anything in HTML and CSS that I will mention it and I'll be sure to go step by step through it. And we'll also be now moving on actually, we'll need a suitable IDE. In this case, we'll be using Sublime Text. It's an open source sort of text edit program IDE for a lot of programming languages. I'll be using it for JavaScript. You also have variation. You also have things available like PHP Storm, and that's also really good for JavaScript. And you have like the that those um, JetBrains. JetBrains is the company actually that makes PHP Storm and WebStorm. Those are really great for JavaScript, but those aren't free unless you have a student and you're a student you have a registered student email. But um, I'll be using Sublime Text because it's completely free and open source. Well, open source that's kind of redundant, but anyway. We're going to search for sublime text and here we go so here is sublime text you just click on the first windows link it's 32 it's 32 bit of variant it's there's no difference between 64 and 32 bit unless you're running on a 32 bit machine i'm running everything in a windows 64 bit machine so it doesn't really make a difference for me i just use for simplicity just click on the first link so I have downloaded. I've downloaded the setup several times on accident. Here we go. Uh, we're just going to install it. Just go next, next. Everything is pretty, pretty simple. So we're going to open it up now. Oops, Sublime. All right. Here's Sublime Text. So this is going to be our IDE for, for um, running, for typing in our JavaScript code. So. With this, we are going to actually be writing our JavaScript code. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to save a file, new file. So JS, I made a folder separate for this course. I'm going to call this test dot and write the extension dot JS. Now this tells Sublime Text now that I'll be running working with the JS file. I'm going to make another file now because J JavaScript can't be displayed on its own. It's only used as the interpreter, an interpreter. It's not a tradi It's not displayed. It's the. It's sort of like the back end of the front end. But in order to sort of compile this program, our program in, in JavaScript, we need to be able to run it through the browser because the browser is basically where JavaScript is processed. So. We need to make an HTML file because the web browser opens works in HTML files. So we're gonna save a new file. Oh no, actually we're gonna make a new file. So we're gonna file new file. We're gonna save as, as you can see here, so new or control N, we're gonna save as, and we're gonna call it index.html. So typically in web development, we named a home page index.html. All right, so now Sublime Text knows we're working an HTML file. So you can see and test that by writing HTML in a tag, HTML, and you see the autofill. And when you do that, you press enter, and you get everything ready for our basic HTML pages structure. So these are, don't, if these look complicated to you, don't worry. These are just called tags. These are just determined, they just determined the parts of a web page. And so this is what this stuff is displayed. Whatever we write in between these tags inside here is displayed. But we won't be worried about that too much. What we what we really need to be talking about is JavaScript. So typically you could write JavaScript from two locations. You could write it in a JavaScript file, 
as we do we, we can see here or and then or then we write it directly in the HTML file however if you have CSS HTML and a lot JavaScript in your web page and it's a complex web page this file here will get look get really ugly really fast so it's often recommended to have an external file for the separate three portions of web development and have them um, separated in different files and then imported. So we're going to show both ways how you import a JavaScript file to this HTML file and just how to write JavaScript directly into HTML. We're going to start with the second part ladder first. That's we're going to write. So we're going to write out script. And what this does, it says now, OK, so we're having JavaScript in the web page. Now, JavaScript, it tends to be load, takes more loading time than the rest of the page, or it can actually, it can take more loading time if you're doing more strenuous, I don't want to say strenuous tasks for the browser, but more, but basically the, the HTML actually just displays, JavaScript actually runs some sort of task. And you might want to have that load at the end of your HTML file because um, that, it's in order to optimize loading times because JavaScript can slow down load times sometimes. Anyway, let's get right into it. So we're going to have write some sim sample JavaScript code here, just something really simple. So we're going to write window dot alert. So what this what is says right here is saying, OK, I'm telling the window, the browser window to give an alert to sort of a notification window that's going to say hello world. This is something really simple. All right, and that's JavaScript. So JavaScript, while I'm here, JavaScript lines of code tend to have, end with a semicolon. Now, if you forget one, JavaScript won't really annoy you about it. They won't nag you about it. It won't have an error. It'll just go right through it. It's pretty lenient. But it's a good practice to have them there because in some situations, you actually need them. And it's good to have them just to organize how your code looks. Yeah, and anyway, so let's open this web page. So when we click on the index.html, you can see that it right away shows hello world. So the browser processed our JavaScript code, as you can see here. And that's when we wrote it directly. You also have another way of displaying, but we're gonna display it to the console this time. So that's displaying to the window itself. And this, we're going to display to the console this time by saying console.log. So we're adding to the console log, hello world. So we're saying, OK, give me the console and then log this string. Strings are in in quotations, by the way. So that's what that is. And when we run this, so we're going to refresh this page. And notice there's nothing here. That's because we have to go run, press F12 in our editor, and it opens the console. This is basically the console now for your program. This is, if you have, you've probably ever done this before, if you accidentally pressed F12 on the, in your browser, or if you actually wanted to look at the elements in a web page, well, this is that. JavaScript is a part of it as well. And JavaScript is displayed in the console. We might get into the details of this stuff later, but um, in general, we'll be often looking back at the console and using this in, and using the, actually the display in the web browser. And a lot of the time, I'll be using console because it's a lot faster than actually making HTML tags and then filling stuff in. But anyway, I digress. So here's hello world in the console. It even tells you what line it's in the index HTML page. And yeah, so let's move on. Now, instead of having everything written here in a um, one file, in the one HTML file, I'm going to import whatever's in here. So let's take this code now and write it, take it and write it in here. So we're saying console log hello world. So it's not run right away because it's not imported. It's nothing's here anymore in JavaScript. So how would we go about in importing whatever's in this file? So what we do is we come over here in this tag and next the next thing after type equals JavaScript, this part, you type in S S R C, which is a source, 
the link to the file which we'll be processing. So test.js. So what we're saying here is that we're going to have a script inside our HTML page, which is JavaScript, and it coming from this file. So with this tends in the source in this source attribute, we tend to have a file path if it's not in the same folder. But we tend to have in web development, we have tend to have the JavaScript, the CSS, and the HTML group together in one folder, so you don't have to write paths. And it, with servers, it gets really complicated. But so, yeah, so we're going to import test.js from the same folder as HTML, index.html. All right, let's do that. So we're going to, I didn't refresh the page yet. So let's refresh the page. And it's not working. Hold on a sec. Let me see what is going on. So we're going to say source script. And we're going to say source equals test.js. All right, it should be good. Test.js. Let's do window.alert. Hello. And here we go. Oops, let's put a semicolon and everything should be fine. So let's close this. Let's open it up again. All right. Let's F12. Oh, and there it is. Didn't have to do F12. So sorry, I had to take I had to take a second to remember this. So there you go. So this code from here was displayed on screen. So let's refresh the page and it's hello. And I just one thing you should know, this isn't this page isn't accessible on the internet. That's a whole nother ball game. This is all locally done. As you can see, I just access an HTML file from my um, from my um, folder. And yeah, so just keep that in mind, you can't access this page from the internet. This is just local testing stuff. And I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Yeah, I think I'll stop here. So I hope you kind of get what this was. Maybe it was a little complicated with the HTML tags, but we won't be getting into it, diving into too much details with HTML. We'll be using our file most of the time and just importing it here and just opening it. And yep, with that, I think I'll conclude this tutorial.